So now here we are, and we are going to do the lettering for this sign. Here is the words. This is part of the pattern. And I'm going to kind of place them not straight across. I'm going to do it at a little bit of an angle, like I did on my other sign. Let me see, where is my other sign? That I can show you. So here is how it is. It's not perfectly straight. It's not perfectly arched. It's just kind of fun and simply put on there. Um, I have told you this before, but I'm terrible at lettering, but I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to show you how I do this. And I'm just going to enjoy the journey. The more I do it, the better I get the feel for it. So I'm making sure the words are on there. Well, where I want it. It doesn't matter if it kind of overlaps somewhere on the design. That's, that's all good too. So I'm going to tape this on here, and I'm going to take. I'm going to do the white graphite paper with this, and I like using a ballpoint pen. For some reason, it seems to do better than a stylus for me. So I'm just going to go over the lettering. It does not have to be perfect. This is just a guideline, and it's all going to be good. Now, why I left it taped because it hinges, and I can see what it looks like. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to move it for the fall part. It means I'll have to move the tape. And I'm going to put the fall on here, where I think it will look good. Let's see how that's going to go. Now see, this one's going to go over this cotton bowl a little bit, but that's okay. See the lining up of it? Where is it on there? Just play with it until you're happy. Make sure I'm not overlapping the Y. Okay, tape it here. And one thing about the graphite, if I don't like the placement after I've transferred it, I can erase it with my Magic Rub Eraser, which here's a portion of it. I link to it in my basic supply list of my blog post, or I should say my blog post on my basic supplies list of things I use all the time. So, let's see how that turned out. Okay, there we go. Now I can't see under the therps, but we can make the ending the way we want to. Now on this, I want it to be dark, so I'm gonna use black. Um, the Ceram Coat, Delta Creative Ceram Coat Black is what I have found works the best for me for uh, lettering. It's just got the right consistency while being opaque. And um, I just prefer it. But you can try anything you want or color. I don't think I need a lot. Also, let's see, where's my brush? Hmm, I don't have it here. Let me find it. So I've kind of got this at an angle so I feel comfortable with how I'm doing this. I'm already bad at it. I'm, so I just want to be comfortable. I'm loading my brush. This is what's called a watercolor brush. Where usually it's filled with water and it you use it for watercolors. Um, Carol of CC Crafts is the one that helped me to learn about this. She had used it and said it worked good for lettering especially for those of us who are challenged. So what I'm going to do is do a lettering. I'm going to kind of look at, um, I'm going to just start in and I'm going to give that a good press there so it's rounded. And then I'm just going to follow the lines. Now I want the back to be fatter. So I'm pressing harder, and then I lift to the point for narrower. Some of the lines may show through, but that's all right. 
we can erase those once everything's dry. You see how I'm too unsteady? I'm trying to do this from a distance. It would be easier for me if I had it at a different angle. So this isn't going to turn out as pretty as I would prefer, but I'm just showing you how it gets done. And I can go back over it, but basically it's pressure. Pressure widen, lift for narrower lines. Keep the paint inky, but not too wet. You don't want it running off. So as I come down, I want it wider. So and I like the squared off edge. If you want it rounded, you would just give it a little round. So like the loops, you want them to be narrower. And then the backs I wanted fatter. I reload as I need. If it's feeling like it's dragging, add a little bit more water to your brush. Reload in your puddle of paint. Now I want that part of the U wide and then narrow as it comes up. And I'm adding more pressure. And then I want the loop, see it's dragging. So I need to add more, touch it in the water add a bit more. Start back here and that didn't work so I'm gonna have to there we go get my hand at an angle. Now I'm further back than I would like. I would be in the camera and I made a mistake there. Do you know how to fix that? Q-tips are your friend and I don't have any right here so I'm gonna take a little piece of paper towel and I'm going to wipe that up. Like I said, a Q-tip could give you more dexterity and you can get closer. But also, as long as it's wet, you can pull it up. Here, I'll show you with, here's a number 10 flat. I moistened it and then you just pull And then you sop it up. You see how that works? And that's how you can fi fix some of your errors as well as with a Q-tip. While it's still wet. I could have done that over there too, but I'm in a hurry. Just giving you an idea. Of, I'm just giving you an idea of how to do lettering. Now you can look at it and see where you want to fix it. This P, the top part's a little too narrow. Narrow is better than too thick. And I just go back over it with that. And I thicken it up. So if I want the little knob on the end, I just kind of push it on there. And there you have the knob. Let me see if I can fix this over here this H. Like I said, I'm at a bad angle and I don't want to get my hand in the wet paint, so I probably would be wiser to wait till it all dries and then try to go in and fix that wonky one. Okay, so here is the fall part. Let me see if I can get that part done. Halfway decent. So I want the little knobby end and pull it in. Now these L's are going to be tricky because I can't see what I'm doing. Because my hand's in the way of my eyesight. I would change this direction of this board. 
if I was not doing the video to where it was more comfortable for me. So here's this part that goes over the cotton bowl. There. It leaves a lot to be desired, but I could have done it better if I wasn't working around a camera. So, I know, I keep repeating that. I'm sorry. There we have the lettering. Now, I could also come in and add a highlight to the lettering. I may totally skip this because I may hate it once. So that is how you do lettering on your sign. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. And you can come in after it's dried and thicken up lines and what have you to um, improve upon it. But I'm just gonna test something here. See if I can add a highlight. So it's still a bit damp. So I don't wanna get my hand in it, but I'm just gonna do like one side of the H to give it a bit of highlight. That was really wet right there. Give it a bit of highlight and the same with this side. And then the A. Got a little bit too much water in my brush. So when you're highlighting or adding like that, you always stay to want the same side on all of them. And you notice I try to skip over that black. Whoops, I got my hand in some of the wet on the F. And when I'm ending, I'm kind of ending, I'm diving into the black there and it kind of pulls it in there where it's not just a chopped off white line. So I'm kind of shortening it. So I'm shortening it. I'm lifting it so it kind of looks like it's diving underneath, if that makes any sense at all. So this F is still wet, so I may end up getting the black into the white. And that is how you would add a highlight on one side or a shadow. If you had like a light color and you wanted to add a shadow, you could go in with a gray and just do this subtle little detail like that. So I need to do around that F and what have you, but you get the picture, and that is how you add your lettering to your sign. I hope this helps you. Please, if you do this, if you create this sign, please share on my Facebook page at Pamela Gropey Art. Thank you for watching this painting lesson. I hope you enjoyed it, and go out there and create some signs. Also, if you didn't want to do lettering, you can find lots of nice stencils that have wording that um, you can reuse over and over again. So the initial output for a stencil, whether it be $10 or what have you, you can make back if you're going to sell your signs. So don't be afraid to skip the hand lettering if you don't like it. Or I'm not a fan of doing it. it to me, it's I don't know, tedious and boring, and maybe if I was good at it, I would like it, but I don't. I'm not, and so I'm not a big fan. I love taking a stencil and adding the words and it being crisp and clean. So there you have it. Happy painting!